friends, it's your old pal Jordan the Line. How you all doing today? I hope you said well. We're going to be great. We're having a hot sunny day here in Fort Lauderdale, Florida. And today we're going to go off and go visit the grave site of one of my favorite comedy men, the great Leslie Nielsen. Sometimes I just refer to him as Frank Drebin because he is, he is so Frank Drebin. I mean, nobody could have played Frank like Leslie, but should be a great day. Days with Jordan the Lion begins right now. Just enjoying our time here in South Florida. And here's the cemetery right over here. So we've made our way over here to Evergreen Cemetery. Leslie Nielsen called Fort Lauderdale his home and, uh, and spent many of his years here, even passing away at his home here. The condo here and um, is buried here in Evergreen Cemetery. It says many Civil War veterans are buried at Evergreen in addition to the founding families of Fort Lauderdale. So Leslie is somewhat easier to find because he has a bench near his grave and his bench is the only one that has a backrest I noticed. And it actually says sit down whenever you can Leslie Nielsen and his final resting place Shirley is right here don't call me Shirley Leslie Nielsen let her rip <laughs> that is, uh, that's because Leslie Nielsen loved fart jokes. He was a huge, huge fan of fart jokes. I guess his personality that we knew him as Frank Drebin, it was kind of like his, uh, you know, that sense of humor was his real life personality. I remember I have seen numerous interviews throughout my life. He had this little handheld fart machine <laughs> that he used to take on, on like the late night shows and anytime he did an interview and he would just, he would squeak that thing and make it sound like he farted right out of nowhere and everything would always stop. People would always just die. He loved his fart jokes. Canadian born. His father was a uh, Royal Mounted Police and because he was a pretty abusive guy, unfortunately. Leslie grew up in Saskatchewan and his father was pretty abusive and used to beat his mother and he and his brother. So when Leslie graduated from high school, he ended up enlisting in the military, the Canadian military, and was trained for World War II. Now Leslie actually had a famous family member. He was a kind of like a second distant cousin, but Jean Herschel was Leslie's second uncle, I guess, or cousin, cousin uncle. It was kind of like just a few steps removed, but Leslie used to tell everybody when he was a little kid that that was, that was his uncle and nobody ever believed him. They used to always call him a liar. So he would invite his friends over to his house to see the eight by 10 signed photos that they had. And he said he always remembered seeing their expression, like his friend's expression when he would show them that they were connected to someone famous and so that's kind of what got him interested in wanting to be an actor as he liked the way people gave them attention like kind of the reaction that he got from his friends. So he came out of the military he attended the Lorne Green Broadcast School and I mean he had a great voice so that that makes sense that you know he would use that wonderful voice to make a living and he originally did some radio and then ended up getting a scholarship to go and train to be an actor and so that's what he did he moved to New York and started performing and caught the eye of some people in the cinema and in the TV industry and the next thing you know he was in Hollywood making a career of being an actor he did over a hundred movie performances or uh, he was in a hundred movies I love it now when he started out, he did a lot of TV. He was on like Gunsmoke and he was on Bonanza and he was it did a lot of, 
you know, basic TV that everyone did, eventually doing MASH and all that stuff. And he got some movie roles, but he was just a, you know, he's kind of like a good looking leading man. And back at the time that he was starting and, and for the first 20, 30 years, there were a lot of those guys. So he never really distinguished himself, never really got the career he wanted out of there, even though he was in Forbidden Planet, which is really what kind of sent his career upward first. And he made several things. He was in Tammy with Debbie Reynolds. And then, of course, he was the captain in Poseidon Adventure, but where his life really changed was Airplane. You see, Leslie had never gotten to play or never got cast as anything really comedic. And the whole purpose to Airplane was that they wanted to spoof all of these drama movies. So they got all of these dramatic actors or they got people that were, you know, decent dramatic actors and they wanted them to play the movie is though everything was serious. And that's where Leslie really shined because he was so good at being stone-faced, being a straight man and saying just off the wall stuff, off the wall one-liners that the people making the movie really, really developed a fondness for Leslie. And like he said, when he did the I'm serious and don't call me Shirley, line he said I thought it was funny but you know it was like comical but I never thought it would be legendary and to this day it's in the top 100 lines of cinema history. Now because he had success in Airplane uh, the people that made the movie the directors and everyone they decided that they wanted to have him do a TV show and so that's where they came up with the idea for Police Squad. Police Squad apparently was extremely well received it was it, it was the first time that we ever saw Frank Drebin, the character of Frank Drebin, which he would bring back for the Naked Gun movies. But it was a TV show where it was, you know, it was a, a scenario of a cop show that they were trying to play straight, but with all kinds of off the wall comedy in it. And like I said, it was well received, but for some reason the studio didn't like it. And just after four episodes, they canceled the show. <laughs> So that was pretty unfortunate because Leslie actually thought this would be something that he would be doing quite often. And it wasn't up until I think four or five years later that they ended up coming up with the concept of the Naked Gun movie, made the movie, and the movie was a huge, huge success. And they ended up, of course, making the sequels to it, 33 and a third, and Naked Gun two and a half, and just had these really wacky, slapstick scenarios you know frank was always doing something physical or saying something crazy or something off the wall and hit and like i said very straight faced which made it even funnier what's interesting is a lot of people didn't know that his entire life he was legally deaf and used an audio hearing device to be able to hear and still had an absolutely fantastic career without letting anything get in his way and then after he had success with the Naked Gun movies. He just started making all kinds of parody things. He was doing the Spy Hard stuff and Dracula Dead and Loving It, which was, it was considered kind of a bomb, but it was, it's actually a pretty good movie. And it was the last movie that Mel Brooks directed. He also did, you know, they would basically cast Leslie in any kind of like, <laughs> like James Bond spoof or The Fugitive. He, he was always doing something and then they cast him as Mr. Magoo, which apparently did not do very well in the box office, but he loved to act and he always, people were always wanting him for stuff because of that golden voice of his. And also just because they knew you could put him in any situation and he could make something that wasn't funny, funny. That even went into the horror genre when he would do those spoof horror movies, the scary movie series. But one thing I always remember from him is that even though he made all of these great comedies in my lifetime, I'll never forget the time that I saw Creep Show and his part in Creep Show. He has this, he plays this guy who has um, basically buried two people up to their neck at a beach and they're going to the tide is gonna come and kill them. And he's sitting there with one of them, basically talking to them, telling them that they're gonna die. It's just very, almost like a sadistic part for him. But man, I, it's always stuck with me. And if you've never seen Creep Show, Creep Show in itself is just an amazing movie anyway. 
So one of Leslie's major passions was golf. He loved to play golf and he was pretty good, but he knew he was never good enough to actually be a professional or anything. So he took his sense of style of humor and his love for golf and ended up making three different bad golf videos, comedic golf. It was basically like instructional golf and one of them was called Bad Golf My Way, but it was really funny stuff. And, and, and actually like you actually could learn something from it. He loved doing those videos. Now sadly in 2010, Leslie ended up passing away. He, um, he was taken to the hospital with pneumonia and he ended up passing away in his sleep at the age of 84 years old. And of course, his legacy is, I feel like, is, is that straight man comedy, but Frank Drebin in particular, there was just too many things in the, if you read the Naked Gun script, that it really was physical. Like, the things that he made funny weren't on the page. There, you know, that was only half of the comedy. He was so good at the physical stuff that I think, you know, anybody interested in comedy or being an actor could definitely learn a lot from watching him. I personally could never get enough of the Naked Gun movies and even vlogged. When I first started vlogging, when I lived in Los Angeles, went around and vlogged a lot of the Naked Gun locations. So it's really special for me to get to come and pay my respects to Leslie here. One of my all time favorites. Absolutely one of my all time favorites. All right, my friends, I hope you enjoyed today's vlog. Thank you, Izzy Standridge, for becoming my newest Patreon. Thank you for the support of this channel. And if you're new here, please subscribe, hit the like button, and click the bell notification for your notifications. And we'll see you all next time. Have a great night, and goodbye.